Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing one of those random movie related videos that is more of a, I guess we'll say, discussion video and is not really on anything specific. And by specific I mean any one specific film. Well, I'm talking about films that were hated and I'm reacting to them. Now, I'm typically known, if you know me, I am typically known for hating films that a lot of people love and loving films that a lot of people hate, especially that one. You hate it, I'm bound to love it, that's just usually how it goes. And since I started doing movie reviews and talking about movies, people have constantly asked me, what are some movies that, you know, you hate that people love or that you love that people hate and I'm like oh crap now I have to try to think what was the popular opinion and that's not something I concern myself with I don't care about popular opinions I just care about sharing my honest opinion and from there having really interesting in-depth discussions with other movie lovers that's why I do this it's not because I think my opinion is right or my opinion is law like I'm some movie god. <laughs> that would be awesome, but that's not the case. Um, it's because I love the enriching experience that comes with talking to other people about movies. So since I can't think what if what are these consensus films that everybody hated, I decided to do the smart thing and I took to my Twitter and I asked all my Twitter pals, name me films that were hated by the masses because most of those people are the masses so they know them better than me and I had quite a few people I've written them all down uh give me some names and they had some very interesting selections so I'm gonna go one by one and share my thoughts on them so as I do this, um, I will also be posting um, the Twitter handles for everybody who submitted a question on the screen. Uh, I will also, if you do not want to hear me, I mean, I, this is a long video, I'm well aware of that and I apologize. So if you do not want to watch the whole thing, you don't have to. If you are someone who submitted a film, then I have your Twitter handle and timestamps in the description box. So if you just want to hear my thoughts on the films you suggested, go down to the description box, click the timestamp and it'll take you directly to your suggestion. So you don't have to suffer through the whole thing. I'm still generous, but nevertheless, the names will be on the screen. So feel free to go and follow these people on social media. A lot of these people actually have um, YouTube accounts you will find that out, so I highly recommend going and subscribing to every single one of them, because they're all amazing. Maybe, and some more amazing than me. I can admit it. Anyway, let's do this. First one comes from my buddy Daniel over at Half Cut. How you doing? How's the gin? And he says the Purge movies. Hmm. Interesting. As a series kind of mixed. The first film I actually quite enjoyed and I just recently put it on my uh, top 10 home invasion movies. I think the home invasion aspect is really good. I think that the premise is really interesting. This kind of, it's like a 21st century dystopia but not being a dystopia, it's, it's weird because it looks like it's a functioning society. But it's got this apocalyptic vibe to it. It's weird and quite believable, especially with the current state of the United States of America. So I enjoyed the first one. And then there's The Purge Anarchy. And I remember watching that and I went, oh, that sucked. <laughs> that was quite shit. And then I watched The Purge Election Year and I'm like, and it gets shitter. Wow. So by the time I finished with those two, I was like, no, no, please don't do any more. And then last year they released the first Purge, which I believe is a prequel and is meant to be about when the Purge came into being, I guess we'll say. I haven't seen that. 
And then they went and made a freaking Purge TV series, and I can't. I can't do it. The first one, yes. The next two, no. So I don't want to deal with the other ones. But yeah, just by the end of it, the, the second two felt like, you know, trying to put more blood on the screen, which was which is a lot of what modern day horror films try to do, which is not something I support. And it just kind of went and became quite... <clears throat> Next comes from the BS Review. Absolutely love the BS Review. I don't know if it was Brittany or Steven who suggested these movies. My intuition tells me Brittany, because Brittany's usually the one who responds to my tweets, which I thank you so much for. You're the best. First one is Catwoman. Um, yeah. Good choice because I know for a fact that every time I come across someone, they hate this movie and I love it. I know that's unpopular. I don't care. That's the whole point of this video. I, Halle Berry looked fucking amazing. You can't deny that. And I know, I know that is so far removed from the DC Comics and is so far removed from um selena kyle and the catwoman origin story it, ha it has a little bit in there but it went a little bit more supernatural um i love sharon stone and sharon stone as this villainess i think is great uh i especially love watching the two of them kick the crap out of each other that's fun uh, soundtrack, also, big fan of that one. I love the Catwoman soundtrack. Um, yeah, there were some songs in there that I was living for. Soundtracks are important to me. That's just a fact. Um, another thing I liked about, and I know it's, it's not in keeping with the comics, but I'm a huge lover of, uh, mythology. And I don't just mean in films, I mean ancient mythology of the world. And one of my favorites is Egyptian mythology. So as soon as you start saying there's this mystical cat, this specific species of cat, and that they are sacred to the Egyptian goddess Bast, I was like, ah, oh, damn, you hooked me in. You, you, you gave me an Egyptian goddess. I'm like, damn it. Uh, Bast was supposed to be the body of a woman but the head of a cat. Um, cats were quite sacred in ancient Egypt. They were protectors and cats are also cute. And that cat was beautiful. But yeah, I know people don't like it, but I had a super ton of fun and campy superhero movies I do quite enjoy. So overall, I really love this movie. I know my brother loved this movie. Um, maybe loved is a bit strong. He, he enjoyed this movie. And I wasn't aware anybody hated it until, you know, I became more involved in the internet. And I'm like, oh, oh, hmm, interesting. And then people are like, well, I can't believe you loved it. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm still going to love it. What's your point? Next up are the Halloween remakes. Oof, is that R word? It's a blasphemous word to me. I hate remakes and reboots. Sometimes, I completely acknowledge this, sometimes... A remake or a reboot can actually turn out quite well. It just rarely happens. So, on principle, I don't like them. I don't like the idea of them. It's it's cheap and it's unoriginal. Just create something new. Stop redoing stuff that's already been done. The Halloween remakes I thought were utter, utter, utter trash. I have tried to watch them twice once because i wanted to find out what they're like second time because i was doing a halloween marathon so i'm like oh damn i have to include them all it was so bad both times and it was actually worse the second time it's so i understand that it tries to go quite dark which is not a bad thing it was just, there were so many inconsistencies in the film, in the plot, in the characters themselves. Uh, then the second one takes quite this weird detour. It tries to go a little bit more supernatural. Like, these two characters suddenly have this psychic link and they're hallucinating their mother. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? 
Um, yeah, I also find it strange um, in the first film. It was one of the first things I started complaining about. First film, he breaks out of the institution. He goes straight to his old house, which why that shit hadn't been you know, bought by a company, knocked down, turn into flats beyond me. That's shit, that's usually what happens. But it was the fact that he goes there, he finds where he hid the knife all those years ago, which should have been completely covered in blood, considering he brutally butchered his family members to death, minus his baby sister. And yet the knife was perfectly clean, perfectly sharp, didn't even have a speck of dust on it, was just hidden under the stairs or the floorboards, whichever. Not a sign of rest, no blood, and just like, like you couldn't even get that right. I know that seems like such a little thing, but if you can't even get the little things right, how are you going to get the big things right? And they didn't get the big things right. Just, it will, such a mess. Although it was nice seeing Danielle Harris. I like her. Danielle, Danielle. I'm pretty sure it's Danielle. I'm, I'm so shit with names sometimes. But I love her. I love her from the original series. And I love her because she was on an episode of Charmed. <laughs> this lovely film lover suggests Jaws the Revenge. Good choice. And yeah, I actually like this film. I don't hate it. I know a lot of people do. Here's the thing, if you have seen Jaws 3D, then Jaws the Revenge, by comparison, is a freaking work of art. Jaws the Revenge um, tries to kind of make up, story-wise, um, th 3D's failures. It is uh, directly connected to the second film. Uh, you know, uh, the characters of the children grown up actually make a lot more sense now uh, as opposed to how they did in the third one. Although pff, the kids' stories, you know, make no correlation between the third and the fourth. Like, they've completely changed. I think the concept is a fail. You are trying to say a shark is getting revenge. And I'm like, but why is the shark getting revenge? Because the sharks were already killed. And sharks usually solo predatory creatures. Or at least great white sharks. And then it managed to follow them to the freaking tropics. <sighs> Aside from the fact that great white sharks would not go into those kind of waters. They just don't do that. My question is, how <laughs> they caught a plane. They caught a plane from Amity to the tropics. And you're saying this shark managed to swim that distance in, in like under 24 hours. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen people on cruise ships. That at least takes a few days, some weeks. Um, that shark must have like super speed. So it's like a super shark. Um, Michael Caine's you know, easy payment role. Um, yeah, look, it has its flaws. I do not deny that. You'd have to have your freaking head in the sand to say it was a perfect film. But execution-wise, still pretty good. I think the effects of the shark were actually quite well done. They had some really good moments. It was just the overall uh, main premise that wasn't quite making sense, but it did attempt to um, fix some things, so I appreciate that. But yeah, anyway, compared to the third one, it's freaking fantastic. Ah, uh, my buddy Douglas, he gives me is X Men: The Last Stand. I know, yes, I am well aware people have their issues with X Men: The Last Stand, and it does have some issues. There is no doubt about that. Um, I don't read the comics, so. <clears throat> I was not aware of things. I, as now that Dark Phoenix is coming out, I have become more familiarized with the Dark Phoenix origin story. So I can see why people were quite ticked off by this movie. But it's superheroes. It's X-Men. It's this 
super powerful person. I thought it was uh, really quite interesting. Yeah, it has issues. Again, I can't deny that. But did these issues make me hate it? No, I actually like the X-Men trilogy. I like X-Men. I like X-Men 2. I like X-Men The Last Stand. I, I think considering the level of power they gave Jean in that film, she could have done a lot more. And she really just kind of stood around in an almost state of catatonia. It's like, you have more power than anybody else on the planet. Like you could do a bit more. Eh, what you gonna do? But, yeah, I like X-Men The Last Stand. It's not the world's best superhero movie, but I like it. Next Twitter person says, Batman versus Superman. Oh, controversial. Oh, we're really getting into the nitty gritty here. Um, Batman vs. Superman, uh, I, I didn't hate it, but I thought it was extremely flawed, especially with editing. That is the, one of the worst edited films I've ever seen and sat through. I think I was rolling my eyes through the entire thing. Yeah, there was just so little that connected this thing to this thing to this thing, and then what was so frustrating is then uh, the extended version comes out and I went, okay, may as well watch it. And I watched it and I'm like, this is so much better. So I gave Batman vs Superman when I reviewed it uh, a 2.5 out of 5. So for me, it was just in the middle, it was average because it had some good stuff. But the, the setup, the way they connected characters, all that stuff like I said, editing. Huge fail. Then I watched the extended version and I gave that a 3.5 out of 5 because while there were still a lot of flaws, fact is that they had deleted every scene that actually explains the movie, explains what Lex Luthor is doing, his motivations, actually shows that He's the reason Batman and Superman now are hating each other and feuding, that he set that all up. All those really important elements were gone. Just poof. But then they were in that extended scene. I'm like, oh my god, you got rid of all the wrong stuff. There was even one character, don't remember her name, pretty sure she was blonde, and she was just kind of there the whole time um, delivering information and putting two and two together and moving things along and they deleted every single one of her scenes like hard for her but just she, she was kind of important because she helped put everything together and get us from a to b so yeah i don't hate batman versus superman i just hated how they went about it and i hated the editing but it was an okay film it was just average. Ah, oh, the film bubble has given me Fantastic Four, as in the reboot. Oh. I put off watching this for a very long time. I'd heard nothing good about it, so I didn't feel compelled to watch it. So then one day, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to check it out. So I did. So I sat and I watched it, and I think I screamed and yelled at the t at my screen for the entire duration of the film. It's like watching a football game. Like, pick it up! Ah! It, was, it was like that. I wanted to rip my hair out. It was fucking atrocious. It was, it was a travesty. I hated literally every goddamn thing. I hated the casting. I hated the writing. I hated the editing. I hated the effects. I hated every single thing they did about it. And so when I walked away, I'm like, oh my god, I actually agree with everyone. This film is one of the shittest films I've ever seen and, and had no problems writing a review trashing the hell out of it. So that's one of the rare times when everybody's like, it's shit. And I'm like, yeah, well, and then I watch it. And I'm like, oh, no, you, you downplayed it. It's really shit. So, yeah, 
hated that one. I agree with you guys on that film. Point break. Next, this lovely person. I'm going to try not to do that every single time, but I'm probably going to do it anyway. And people are going to get annoyed. Ah, this person has given me th 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 three, no, maybe more like five <laughs> movies. Uh, first one is the Star Wars prequels. I actually, in my um, video where I talk about me being done with Star Wars, I do like the prequels. I know people love to complain about them for various uh, reasons. I I love any time I get to learn more about a universe and its mythologies, especially something that is so vast like Star Wars. So if you give me a prequel and you give me backstories, you explain how characters came into being, like C-3PO, you know, how Anakin became evil. I find that stuff really interesting. I, I've said it in so many of my videos and reviews. I'm a sucker for a backstory. I love it. And everybody was like, we hate Hayden Christensen. He was so shit in it. I don't think he was shit in it because he was doing what the script said. If anything, you should commend him going, well, he acted it successfully if they wanted. I mean, think about it. Anakin is not meant to be liked. Anakin turns into Darth Vader. He was always going to go down a very dark path. So he had to be someone who has things about him that make him susceptible to going to the dark side. And so he has issues. And then he's got that kind of teen angst in a space sci-fi setting. But it all makes sense. People kind of from my perspective and what people have said to me they're like he was annoying he was this he had an issue with everything it's like yeah and he turned into fucking Darth Vader that's kind of the point he was meant to be someone who was meant to be easily manipulated and but has power but doesn't quite know what to do with it and, and has issues and using his mother was a really good trigger because his mother was all he had and to find out, you know, she was killed. Really good trigger stuff. Um, not sure I loved how the stormtroopers came to be, but it was still kind of cool. I mean, I I really enjoy all of them. Maybe not necessarily the Padme Anakin story, because she was she was fairly older than him. Um, but then, you know, that's, that's still good. Up. Is that like statutory rape or anything? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the, I don't know what age he was in that film. And I don't know, I don't know what the statute is in other fictional planets. So, but yeah, I actually like the prequels. I don't hate them. And yeah, I even like Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, I like them. Other people can hate them. I don't care. I enjoy them. Uh, next is Batman and Robin. Okay, I know. People bitch about this one all the time. It's almost always in my feed, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. People will post something and they're like, oh, well, still better than Batman and Robin. I'm like, to you. Because I love Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin is one of my favorite superhero movies it is so campy and so cheesy but the kind of camp and cheese that i like um it also it's so the oh the score and the soundtrack are phenomenal and i really love um the film's use of color it for me watching it it feels like the colours of a comic book page just completely jumped off the page and onto the screen. And I loved it. And I will always love it. Um, it's also the only time that, you know, we've had Batgirl in the movies. And that's really such a shame. But she was there and she was prominent and she was quite the bard. Ba bard. Quite the badass. Um, she wasn't obviously the daughter or niece or whatever of Commissioner Gordon, but, I mean, she was included. 
I mean, she probably could have been. They didn't have to make her uh, Alfred's niece. But nevertheless, I really love it. I love Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. I thought she was so good. Um, yeah, and I ha I watched it with my nieces um, a couple months ago, and they both loved it too. But because they were kids, and for them, they're like, "Ooh, color!" And I guess I'm kind of the same way. I'm just like, "Ooh, color!" So yeah, I love it, and I have the soundtrack, and I have the score. Um, oh, my favorite piece. My favorite composition on the score is um, Poison Ivy's entrance at the charity ball. I'm like, oh, I don't that music. Oh, love it. Mm, interesting. This next one, Showgirls. Oh, we're going. We're going there. We, we're going there. That's an interesting um, choice. I would not say Showgirls is by any means one of the world's best films, but I actually kind of like it minus the rape stuff and I think the sex scenes are a little weird because I don't think anybody would find that kind of contortion spinning thing fun I don't think it's fun for the woman and I don't think it would be fun for the dude I just don't buy that it's not without its flaws that's for sure but here's and it has be had become a cult classic and it has quite the cult following but I don't hate it. I actually kind of like it. And here's why. I'm going to break it down because I've actually never gotten the chance to say it. So I'm going to say it. So this is probably the most lengthy one I'm talking about in this video. Showgirls has an interesting way of depicting a woman using her feminine wiles and her sexuality as a power and a strength instead of it being depicted as a weakness which i think is really interesting because it's different than other films it's not used in the sense of like some super spy infiltrating by sleeping with her you know mission whatever it's not like that you have the character nomi and she has come from a really fucked up background and she's experienced some very horrible things in her youth and growing up. And from that, she has learned of a very young age that men, and I'm not speaking about all men, I'm talking about in the context of the film, men only want one thing. And she has that one thing that they want. And it kind of makes them stupid. And they will do horrible things to attain it. She has kind of caught on to the fact that she can use that to her advantage. She can use this thing that they want so much, but she can turn it against them. She's cracked the code. And so people are like, she's a whore, she's a this, she's not. She's actually smart. She knows to move in a way not to get herself completely taken advantage of. She knows how to take advantage of others because she's been in this really cutthroat, fucked up world long enough. Then you have her contrast, which is her friend whose name I can't remember. She's the complete opposite of Nomi. She's kind and sweet and uh, sees the good in people and, and sees the good in the world. And what happens to her? She ends up being severely beaten and raped she's not in touch with her sexuality and or what kind of power she has as a woman and because of that a bunch of fucking disgusting guys completely brutalize her and it's so it's that interesting contrast of the two that this woman who people want to trash and and look down upon but the fact is nobody can really do that shit to her because she's already ahead of the game. She knows how to manipulate and kind of prevent this from happening. She knows how to use what she has and what men want to essentially kind of protect herself. But this other person who saw the good in the world is more soft-spoken, more humble, 
and and doesn't express any of that stuff she was the one who ends up being absolutely brutalized and i gotta say i definitely love when nomi uses the power of her womanness to now that's more going down the female spy route but she um knows what he wants she's prepared to give it to him and then use it against him and she beats the shit out of him and he bloody deserved it so good on her for getting some form of justice for her friend um is this a well-written movie is are there morals i don't know but there are interesting um subjects and themes that are discussed in the film and those things i quite respect and i find it really interesting because i haven't really seen other films um depict that kind of subject matter in that way or be so willing to get down and dirty for lack of a better term um but it's not a perfect film it's not a masterpiece or a work of art but it definitely has elements that i appreciate so um yeah i like it don't love it but i like it congo oh, i love congo congo is one of my favorite movies i need to write it down every time i say that so i can keep a track of like what's on my top 100. i love congo um you know you've got the lost city of who was it again solomon's mines so it's all his diamonds um i think that's great i love tim curry uh, I mean, it's Tim Curry, so I just kind of love him in anything. And then I love Amy, Amy the gorilla, who does sign language. I, Amy's awesome. Amy, good. Gorilla, bad. She's awesome. I love Amy. Um, yeah, I've seen that film a fair few times over the years, and any time it would come on TV, my mom would be like, "Oh, Congo's on. Do you want to watch it?" I'm like, "Yes." And then it just kind of became that thing that whenever it's kind of on or I come across it, I immediately watch it because I enjoy it so, so much. Um, yeah, I know some people, I don't know about everybody, but I, I know that it, um, there are a fair few people who thought it was kind of crap, but um, I don't care. I love that movie. I loved it so, so much. I could, I could watch it forever. I may have to go watch that in a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> I miss it. Haven't watched it in a while. So far this list is just proving my point that I tend to enjoy movies people hate. Which I am mad at. Just means more movies for me. Um, next up, this person, uh, says 2017's The Mummy. Shit. It was shit. I hated the trailers with a passion and then I went to the movies to see it with my mom and my brother. And I was hating so much that was going on that I actually pulled a pen out of my pocket and started writing notes on my hand and my arm going and I hated this and I hated this and this and this so that I could try to include it into a review when I got home. There was so... Oh, so much wrong. So much I hated. And I put it all into review. There, there were a couple that I liked but for the most part it was the worst attempt at building a franchise so the mummy happened which was a travesty especially to the 90s version which I love minus the third installment um Tom Cruise I like you Tom but you kind of sucked in this uh everything you have an Egyptian character who's not even buried in Egypt. There's nothing Egyptian about her. You call her a mummy. And then, you know, then it's like, oh, look, we've got mummies attacking. I'm like, they're not mummies. They're just corpses that have come from the grave. She's turning. She's like, oh, look, she creates mummies. I'm like, no, she didn't. She just turned people into zombies. We have zombies, not mummies. Um... There's symbology and architecture and things that are not remotely Egyptian 
it's just a cultural clusterfuck. They got nothing right. And then they're trying to build a universe and they're trying to do too much in one film to build a universe that ain't going anywhere. So, yeah, while there are a couple things I like, and I don't remember what they were off the top of my head, which goes to show how few of them there were, um, oh yeah, dead stalker ghost best friend. That was also stupid. But the side, yeah, it was just a bad film. There's a really, really bad film, although I think my mom and my brother actually liked it. Next up, we have this person who said the Fifty Shades Trilogy. If you have seen my video, which I did to review Fifty Shades Freed, and then I shared my thoughts on the first two films in it, because I never reviewed them individually, I am a Fifty Shades fan. I have the books. I have the books from Christian's perspective as well. I actually like those better than the ones from Anastasia's perspective, but that's also because I kind of like don't like women. Um, I, I really like these films because I'm a fan of the books and so it's really nice when you've become invested in characters in a world and then you get to see them put on the screen. Are there flaws in these films? Yes there are but there are also a lot of flaws anytime you adapt book to film. You take out the wrong things and uh, in this case they took out a lot of crucial things and this is happening a lot and this is exactly what I said with um, Batman versus Superman and I will I will demonstrate this with Fifty Shades Freed specifically. So I watched the film and I enjoyed it. The tone was different to the first two just like the books um, but then I got a little aggravated at all the very important crucial parts that they have left out not only just of all three but especially that one not telling us enough about Christian's backstory, about the fact that they really romanticized the fact that Christian was sexually abused as a teenager. He was underage and an older woman took advantage of him. That's, he's warped and he thinks that, you know, it was a consensual relationship, but he was not of an age to consent. That was sexual abuse. And he doesn't really get that until the end of the third book, or in this case, the third film, and the movies never stress that. They keep, so people watch it and like, oh my god, he's a fucking asshole, da da da. I'm like, because you don't get to see the other parts that are included that show that he's a victim, that he's had a very fucked up life. We don't see how he interacts with his therapist, what his therapist has discerned about him. And then we don't go into a lot of Christian's backstory and his backstory with Elena the woman who abused him and the thing is is that they really should when you watch Fifty Shades Freed you get to the end of the film and the end of the film they reveal that Elena's ex-husband was the one who paid for Hyde to he paid his bail so that he would get out essentially so that he would attack Christian and Christian's family the film reveals this at the end and you're just like who is this person how are they involved what the fuck do they have to do with anything there were actually a couple of deleted scenes in 50 shades freed that have uh christian and anna meeting elena's ex-husband and you kind of immediately see this animosity this guy fucking hates christian this is also a character who we learn in the books when he found out that his wife was having a sexual relationship with Christian, um, instead of having any sympathy for this poor kid, um, he beat the living shit out of his wife. He was already a very uh, abusive person, and when he found that out, he put her in the hospital. So we know all that in the books. So because we know the in-betweens, we can accept what's on the screen. People who do not read them watch this and go, well, how the fuck did we get from A to B? And the fact that you at least had one or two scenes that you had written to establish who this character is, how they're connected, and how they are what leads to the events at the end of the film, to remove that means everybody's gone, well, what the fuck just happened? How did we get here? So, as a fan of the books and all that, because I know all the extra bits, 
I can accept it because I can put it all together and, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm okay. But if I didn't read the books and I was just a film fan, I'd be pissed off because they'd be like, hey, hey, hey no, I, I don't know how we got here. It's like we just teleported from the start of the film to the end of the film. What the F? But... So that's an issue, and it's happening a lot with films, that they're deleting all the stuff that's essential to explain what the fuck is meant to happen. So all these movies might be doing a little bit better with the critics if they stop deleting important stuff. <laughs> There's plenty of other stuff you can delete, but you're deleting the wrong ones, so there. I've mentioned that a few times now, but that's an issue. Uh, next up we have Ashley, man who shares the same name as me, spelled differently, as you can tell. Uh, he says, essentially, all the Transformers films, especially Revenge of the Fallen, I love the Transformers movies. I'm less of a fan of them when Mark Wahlberg came into it, um, but nevertheless, I really, 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 really love the Transformers movies. I know they are full of laws i do not deny that but i've always said if you can distract me by entertaining me and entertaining me a lot then i can overlook the flaws and i am always super entertained i like this kind of theme of, of racism but it's depicted using humans and autobots i find that stuff really cool um like it yeah so as i said not as much a fan with Mark Wahlberg in it and um the only one that I kind of have an issue with is Dark Side of the Moon and that's because of the actress in it holy shit um she is a shitty actress they got someone and I'm sorry if this sounds cruel but this is how it came off that they got someone just because she was really good looking because every time she was on the screen they were either zooming in on her legs or her ass or some part of her figure it was never about her acting or anything about this it was just about the fact that she looks hot therefore she looks good on camera and then and then of course we have that scene where she's kidnapped it's like you're kidnapped and you're held in i think she was being held in trump tower not quite sure but when she's kidnapped it's like oh this is the nicest kidnapper ever he lets you do your head do your makeup and give you a change of clothes and i'm pretty sure they're all very high-end brands i'm like dude kidnap me and then of course she's being running through was it chicago i can't remember now i think it was chicago they're going through this completely destroyed, demolished city, and by the end of it, her manicure is still perfect. Oh yeah, she got a manicure after she got kidnapped too. Her manicure is perfect, her hair is immaculate, her makeup is perfect. She's wearing, it was either a white or a pink uh, blazer, and that pretty much didn't have a spot on it. She was running around this fucking city with stones everywhere, buildings collapse in high heels. If you've ever tried to run in high heels, uh, not easy. I, for one, can't bloody do it. But of course, I did catch the scenes where it's like a wide shot and they're running really fast. I'm like, ha ha! She switched to the flats. And then in the next scene, she's back in the high heels. Um, she's the one thing I hated the most. But for the most part, I love the movies. I love Optimus Prime. I love Bumblebee. Um, yeah, I just have a lot of fun with those movies, even the last night. My good buddy Jared has said League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Jared, my man, I love you and I love your selection because I fucking love League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and I'm still to this day absolutely devastated that I didn't get a freaking sequel. I love that movie. I know the creator of the comics was not a fan of the film adaption. I love it. I love Sean Connery. I love that you had Mina is now a bride of Dracula, like she went legit dr vampire. Um, I love all these classic monster movie characters have been put, brought into this one story, I know, based on comics. But it's so much fun, The Invisible Man, um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, um, 
uh nemo from was it Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea uh and uh, uh dorian gray uh, just so many amazing monster characters brought into this one film set in this other time yet futuristic at the same time i i love the effects i love the look of it i i loved all these you know what are, what are typically meant to be like villains in their respective films being brought together to be the heroes oh it's like the og suicide squad <gasps> oh mind blown um i love it i have so much fun with it i watch it any time I get a chance to and I never stop having fun watching that movie and I don't think I ever will and like I said the only thing I hate is the fact that I never got a sequel and you left me with a cliffhanger I hate cliffhangers next up is my buddy Sam who has given me four movies let's try and rush through them um first movie Supergirl Supergirl also has quite the cult classic and everybody loves to say Supergirl is shit I quite enjoyed Supergirl um as a child um my brother got it for me on VHS and he's like here I thought you'd want to watch this and I said who is it he says it's Supergirl I'm like I said like Superman and he says, yeah, she's Superman's cousin. I'm like, oh, Superman has a cousin? He's like, yeah, Superman has a cousin. And she's got a movie. I'm like, she's got her own movie? I'm like, there's a female superhero? Like, for me as a kid, you're always seeing, I was always seeing male superheroes. So for me, it was like, wow, a female superhero? Female running around? Fl no, running around. She was flying around. I thought she was really good. I loved getting to see an extra part of Superman's world and then of course seeing her adapt to being on Earth. Um, I think it was a lot of fun and being a kid stumbling across a female superhero movie when there were not female superhero movies or that many female characters um, to look up to I thought it was really cool and um, I don't know how I'd feel now but I know how I felt then and yeah. Supergirl is A-OK. -okay. Uh, Ghostbusters. Yep, I loved Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters made me laugh, like, non-stop. I laughed through the entire film, which was what I wanted. I went I went to see it because I th thought it was going to be a comedy, and it made me laugh, so win. Um, I remember I... G I remember another reviewer uh came to my video review of it and gave me like a paragraph length lecture on how ghost the ghostbusters remake is sexist towards men i'm like mm-hmm mm-hmm continue i don't know to continue it was like big ass thing um going on it's sexist against men it's offensive the way that they have depicted Chris Hemsworth as playing this ditzy, blonde, idiot secretary who has nothing of use and does nothing but is the butt of every joke. He's like, it's so offensive and so disgusting that they would do that to a guy. I'm like, oh, you mean exactly what Hollywood has been doing to women since the dawn of cinema. I'm like, that was the whole fucking point of the movie was to give you a twist and show you roles that are typically depicted by women now being depicted by men or roles played by men now being depicted by women that was the whole point and it was to be done in a comedic way which it was and to see some dude getting so butt hurt it's like well how do you like it now you know how we've been feeling for all this time it sucks and then the dumbest thing he said was when he sorry it's so funny when i think about it when he said that them using a funeral car as their like ghost mobile was offensive to dead people just just ponder this for a moment a reviewer saying a movie about ghosts ghosts is offensive to dead people 
Not because it's about ghosts, but because they use a funeral car. Wow. American education system fails again. <laughs> but, anyway, jokes aside, at that person's expense. That's some dumb logic, sorry. But, yep, loved Ghostbusters. Still do. I love the originals and I like the remake. There you go, I said it. Blair Witch Project. Um, I don't know if Blair Witch Project was hated. I thought it was quite scary as a kid and as someone who hates virtually almost everything that is a found footage film, I hate the genre, um, Blair Witch Project is one of the rare found footage films that I actually like because it's executed in a logical way. You've got things like Paranormal Activity 5 or any other thing that's like, yeah, let's, 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 let's have a private conversation. Let's, let's go outside and talk. It's like, why do you still have the camera with you? Why are you spending all your day walking around with this fucking camera? You have literally no reason to be doing it. You know, especially when it's like times when it's like they don't know anything paranormal is going on, but they've still got the camera. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. So, but this, the people who have gone out into the woods for the purpose of filming a documentary, they are documenting the entire thing. So therefore, it's logical that they have a camera with them because documentary. Um, but as I've gotten older, it does not scare me anymore. And while I definitely commend the execution, my issues have become... Um, so much of the story is not answered. Um, I'm still unsure of what actually happened. Um, like, we're meant to believe that there's some witch, and I'm like, but ultimately, I get more of a vibe of, did they just go completely insane, or was there really a witch? I don't know. And as an adult watching it, I watch it and I walk out, I'm like, I have more questions than I do answers, and if I feel that way after a movie, I'm quite annoyed. So, as a kid, loved it, scared me. As an adult, appreciate it, but have far too many questions, um, and it doesn't scare me anymore. So, that's a tricky one. Uh, and last for my buddy Sam is Batman Forever. If I loved Batman and Robin, then it's a no-brainer that I love Batman Forever. Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face, Jim Carrey as the Riddler. Oh my god, that's one of the best casting decisions ever. Whew. Nicole Kidman looked freaking amazing in that movie, if I may say so myself. Uh, Val Kilmer is my favorite Batman. He can be my Batman any day. Loved it. Um, there's nothing for me to hate. And again, a brilliant soundtrack. Hello, you two's Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, and Seal's Kiss from a Rose. Oh, you'll make me so happy. That's why I have these soundtracks, because they are so good. Um, yeah, not much. I mean, whatever I said about Batman and Robin, apply it to Batman Forever as well. Loved it. Um, Dr. Movie 91. Um says the bye bye man oh that's a cr that's a good choice because i know that one's hated um i like stacy title's work and she was the one who directed the bye bye man sadly for her her husband also wrote it which i think is just a sign don't work with family don't do it because you probably won't tell them kind of what they need to hear which is maybe your script kind of sucks i think it was a really good concept there was something there, it reminded me, oh my god, I'm never going to remember the name of that Supernatural episode, which is basically what it was, that it's, if you believe in something enough, it becomes real. That it's the power of the mind that brings it to life. It's a really solid concept, and there is something there, and there's something kind of psychological about it. So I think the script was on the right path. But the execution was not there. It maybe had like one or two moments where I'm like, oh, that was good, that was good. Oh, like, ah, yeah, you, you were there, you had it, you went too far. Um, 
so I know a lot of people hate it. I did not love this movie, but there were things in it that I liked, and I think it had potential. They just kind of went about it the wrong way. So I don't hate it. I don't love it. I just thought it was kind of okay. Mike! Mike, 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 Mike lists uh, Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Love them both. I do not care. I actually went to the Rise of the Silver Surfer red carpet, which was being done um, just a few blocks away from my house. And at the time it said Julian McMahon was going to be there. I'm like, oh my god, fellow Australian, we have the same middle name and you were on Charmed and you're in this. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to see him. And then he failed at the last minute so Chris Evans ended up going and said he wasn't going to but then he was I was like <laughs> like well I like Chris Evans and I wanted Julian McMahon um and I ended up getting uh Michael Schickless and um Ion Grufford's um autographs I still got them on my Fantastic Four DVD I love these movies they're they're a little bit campy but I think Fantastic Four is a really solid origin story. I think it's really good. Um, I hate that in the sequel, suddenly Sue has this god-awful wig, and which you can tell is a wig, and she's wearing these ridiculous blue contacts that make her look like she's on fucking LSD or something. That aside, and I know Galactus the film did not do justice to the comics as I have been told by comic fans but I still I really love the scores I really love um the stories I love the characters um I love the Fantastic Four movies and again it's another case where I'm still devastated I didn't get a third film I wanted one I love these movies I think they did some really great casting I think especially Michael Schickless is the thing. I think he looked amazing. What they I don't think that they needed to do a reboot of it. They could have just done a third film because even though there were people who hated it, there was still a huge, yeah, there were a lot of people who hated it, but those films still had a huge fan base that was enough to carry it. They did not need to reboot it because the reboot tanked. That was just a waste of money. P.S. The thing in the reboot, oh my god, it looked horrible. At least these, it kind of really feels like the comic books. And I love that there was a really strong sense of family in these movies. And you do not get that in the reboot at all. So, woohoo! Go Fantastic Four! Last film on this list. And then I am done Thank you for sticking with me. I know this has been a really long video. Um, last, we have Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I did go to see this at the movies. Um, I love Kate Blanchett, but I did not like her in this movie at all. It was great to see um, Harrison Ford back as Indiana. Shia LaBeouf is this kind of James Dean wannabe who is his son and is there to kind of take up the mantle but then not take up the mantle. That was a fail. Um, I f All these films have always had this kind of supernatural-esque tone to them but it was always done in a way that made it feel realistic. But the Crystal Skull is going more sci-fi. I mean, you have aliens and you've got like superior being aliens. And what was it like the Mayan ruins or something like that? And I'm like, I'm like, that's the equivalent of conspiracy theorists or alien believers who believe it was aliens who built the e Egyptian pyramids. Like it's, it was a stretch. And as far as stretches go, I didn't think it worked. Like, everything was going really interesting. Um, um, until you revealed aliens. And I'm like, eh, and you lost me. And while I, in the past, liked Shia LaBeouf, that... No, I didn't like him in that film. Dude, you know James Dean and you never will be. We did it! 
I got through all of them. Thank you, everybody. I know, again, lengthy video, but thank you to everybody who submitted a film for me to talk about. There was a really great selection of films that you guys picked, and, um, yeah, <laughs> and I loved most of them. Like, y'all just gave me a list of stuff to watch, you know, in the next coming days if I get bored. Um, but the whole point of this is, is me not saying that anybody who dislikes them is wrong. It's to show you that everybody has a different opinion. And those opinions are okay. You don't have to go with the majority. It's okay to stand out. If there's someone who's going to make you feel bad about that, that's on them, not on you. There are ghosts in my room. Uh, no surprise there. Point is, is that we should all feel comfortable sharing thoughts and feelings on movies because the discussions we get out of them, as I've said, is so enriching. So I think I might do a companion to this video and talk about movies that everybody loved and uh, see if I agree or see if I hated them. Because um, I'm proud of the fact that I don't tend to stick. You know, I, I don't follow the pack. I'm a lone wolf. I don't mind standing out. I'm proud of it. And if you are another person like that, be proud of it. You know, just embrace it and go with it. It's actually a lot more fun once you do that. It doesn't really matter whether you love films or hate films. If you like talking about them, it doesn't matter whether it's a film you liked or you didn't like. Just talk about it. It ends up going great anyway. So, please, uh, comment below, share your thoughts on these movies, uh, maybe tell me some films that uh, the masses hated that you loved. I would love to hear back from you. And until next time, bye.